everybody. Welcome to Teensy Vintage. This is Teresa and this is another art process video. Today we are playing in my large Dilutions journal. I've got a vintage photo of a woman sitting on a wall. Um, I actually made a photocopy of this image. Sometimes I use real photos in my work and sometimes I just use a copy. Um, I think sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit more free if I'm using a copy than a, than an actual photo. Um, I have less pressure on me, I guess. So uh, if you use photocopies or, you know, uh, reasonable facsimiles in your work, I think that's fine. That's great. Um, anyway, well, here I am spraying some Dilutions ink on my page. And if you watched my last video, you would remember me saying how disappointed I was about the tags. The ink wouldn't run. Uh, the paper of the tag just soaked it right up. Well, this paper did the opposite. In fact, I had a little bit of a mess and some of the ink went into the spine, um, but that's okay. We've got it cleaned up. We've got it nice and dry. We more importantly have a lot of beautiful, vibrant color. We have some color mixing. So um, I just used three colors. I use bubblegum pink, London blue, and lemon zest. And that gave me a little purple, a little orange, and a little green when the three of those mixed together, um, which is what I wanted. I wanted a nice rainbow background, something really bright and happy. Um, I was feeling pretty good when I made this piece and I just wanted to reflect, uh, that. So it takes me a little while to dry this cause well, it's a lot of ink and a lot of water. However, I was really happy with the nice swirly mixed look that, that came from, from adding these inks to the page. Uh, and I'll say it again. I love these Dilutions journals. The paper is great. It does curl a little bit. Um, hence my clip down there at the bottom, but you know what? That's okay. A little paper curling, uh, never really hurt anybody. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to take some white gesso and, um, add that to my piece. I'm also going to do some stamping. I decided to do the stamping first, uh, instead of stamping on top of the gesso. So I've got archival ink in jet black and a Viva Las Vegas stamp. And I want to say that one's just called Rose of Numbers. I could be wrong. Um, all the supplies will be listed in the description. And as always, if you have any questions about something I am using or doing in my video, just ask in the comments. I'm more than happy to tell you whatever I can tell you about it. <laughs> so I'm just going around the whole page. I started out with the with the, the block to make sure I got all the numbers and then I just took the stamp itself off the block to get partial stamps. And now I'm using a cosmetic sponge and a little bit of white gesso just to go into all the in-between spots um, to kind of blur them together and push back a little bit of that bright color. So visually it will look less um, intense. And I use my sponge here and I use my fingers a little bit too, just to get a nice smudgy, um, blended look. Also, this is really fun. <laughs> There's really no right or wrong way to do this part. I really would um, suggest that you just use your intuition and go slowly. You know, I know this is a sped up version of this video, but just take your time. If something's a little too white, that's okay. You know, um, you could come back in with some color afterwards. I actually felt like some parts weren't white enough, so I added some more gesso. Um, and then in terms of smudging, I find that my finger gives a really nice, um, smooth look. The sponge gives a little bit of a different look. So play with both and see which, um, works for you. 
I've got now got a stencil out and I'm going to use the archival ink again uh, and switch out my little ink pad there. And I'm just going to go through my inker very lightly. I'm not looking for a perfect uh, stencil. What I'm doing is blending in some stencil here and there onto my page just to kind of make it look like it's peeking through the clouds, so to speak. You could use any kind of stencil you want. Uh, I do recommend one that isn't too delicate so that you can, you know, get your design down without it getting too fussy. All right. Get some of that ink off my hands. This is definitely a dirty page with dirty hands. <laughs> I'm going to ink up the sides of my page too. Uh, and make sure everything is nice and dry. That archival ink dries pretty quickly. It's a permanent ink, so it is not going to run or cause um, other inks to run. All right, so now I am back with my focal image, and I need something to go behind this image, um, something to kind of ground it. And I'm just going through my box O scraps here. I've got a little bit of everything in here. If you're like me, you save everything. So you've got some uh, cardstock here, things that I had punched um, little die cuts out of earlier. I really like the way this particular cluster of circles looks, so I'm going to tear off the edges to give it a more organic look to go with the torn edge of the photo. And I've also got some little teeny tiny die cuts. There's a circular one and that mirrors the circles in the pink piece. And then I've also got this um, piece of cardstock that I had um, stenciled and looked like gel press um, something on. So I've got a few pieces of that and then I have these faux film strip or um, negatives, photograph negatives. Uh, and I think those are from 49 and market. Um, and I'm going to just slowly glue all these together. Um, if I wasn't recording this, I would usually just take a photo of it as a reference and then glue it all together. But since I'm using my phone to record this video, I'm just going to kind of glue things from the top down. Um, and so... It's, it's not a precise way to get things onto your page, but it's better than nothing. Um, sometimes I feel like I have a goldfish's memory. <laughs> so if I lifted all of that up and then tried to glue it back down, I probably wouldn't be able to. But I am able to glue little bits together. And then, as you can see, I made this cluster, and now I can just glue that on top of the base. And I'm going to use my paper towel so I don't smear glue all over my hands. But that makes sure everything gets pressed down firmly. And that art glitter glue dries really quickly. Um, it is not like the glue stick where you have a little bit of time, you know, open time to move things around. The art glitter glue is great. Um, it dries clear. It's got a nice consistency. There's no glitter in it. That's just the brand name. Um... <laughs> But uh, it dries super fast, like within seconds. Um, so I've got a paper sentiment here that I took out of an old book. And now I'm going to ink the edges. And I'm just trying to figure out where the heck to put it. It's kind of a, it's a multiple, it's a long sentence. <laughs> anyway, I finally figure out where I want it to go. And I stick that down. Uh, yeah, there we go. That makes me pretty happy. And now I'm going to date it and sign it. And that's pretty much it, y'all. I really appreciate you watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. <laughs>